Hello and welcome St. Petersburg, Tampa, everybody else in YouTube land, uh, and all the other people that may have joined this call. You are here for the Ask Us Anything WordPress St. Petersburg Meetup. Uh, below me in the chat or in the screen below, you see Travis Lopes and Elaine Simmons. Say hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hello. Hey, yes, or gals or gals or whoever you want to call. Uh, let me get my lost my slideshow. Give me just a second, guys. There we go. All right. So like I said, this is our Ask Us Anything crowdsourcing WordPress support workshop. Uh, we are WordPress St. Petersburg. We meet monthly the first Tuesday of the month through 2020 online only. Our website, our meetup website is meetup.com, WordPress St. Petersburg. Our website is wptampabay.org. On our website, we have a Slack chat link, uh, a Facebook group, or a YouTube channel, and a list of all of our meetups, uh, including history from our prior meetups, uh, videos where those meetups had videos, etc. I'm getting a loop from somebody over there. <laughs> I fixed it. Okay, cool. All right. So uh, we are also a member of the WordPress Tampa Bay Network. What that means is that we are a, a coalition of meetup groups in the Tampa Bay area, which includes at this point Brandon, uh, Newport Ritchie, St. Petersburg, and Tampa, uh, th those four. So we are currently the only ones actively doing uh, meetups because we're set up for the live stream and we've been doing them for a while. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh. Our upcoming meetups and events, uh, this month's 12-15, the second Tuesday, is canceled. We normally do a scheduled talk. Uh, we're canceling it for the holiday so that you guys can stay home or, or wherever you need to be staying and enjoy the, your holiday. Uh, January 5th is going to be our next meetup, and I'll talk about it on the next slide. And we'll be picking up our Ask Us Anything in January 19th. So we'll be doing this again on the third Tuesday of the month instead of the first Tuesday of the month. On January 5th, we are doing the Year from Hell 2020, our annual year in review. Uh, what do you want to learn this year? Every year uh, for the last, well, I guess pretty much since the year we started doing meetups, right, Elaine? Uh, yeah. At the end of the year we go through and we talk about what we've talked about that year and then we also open up the floor to every single person in the meetup that ha happens to attend that night and ask them what do you want to learn this year and we try to incorporate that into our schedule for the year uh, and you know I'd like either do a scheduled talk on it either do maybe a uh, kind of like an open panel discussion whatever works best for whatever format that is for whatever that particular topic is so when you RSVP to this particular talk, which is January, uh, there's a question in the RSVP that actually asks you, what do you want to learn this year? And I, I welcome you, please, to answer that. Take some time. Think of your question. Think about what you'd really like to learn. Uh, this year has changed a lot for everybody. Uh, you know, this year has pointed out to the fact that remote work and working, you know, working from home, working from having to have some kind of a web-like interface is going to become a necessary business skill. So there's a lot of stuff we can teach you. And there's a lot of stuff we can also learn from you as well. So uh, give it a thought, answer that, and we will see you on January 5th for the next uh, meetup. Okay, uh, we're looking for speakers, as I always. Uh, we're looking for speakers that know WordPress, web design, front end or back end, plugin reviews, thing reviews, anything pertinent to web design. We also tend to and always have tended to focus a lot on small business and entrepreneurship in the St. Pete meetup. So if you have um, some interesting ideas on how to run a small business or you know things along those lines, uh, we talked about contracts before. We've talked about dealing with problem clients. We've talked about a lot of things like that. So those are also quite open for discussion and, and for possible speaking to topics. If you've never spoken public before, that's not a problem. Uh, this is a very safe space. The nice thing about doing it online is you never see your audience. Uh, they aren't even looking at you. So only your computer screen and your dog on the other side of the screen is looking at you. Uh, these meetups are also, uh, speaking at a meetup is also very good for your uh, resume, your LinkedIn, or your Twitter. So that's a good thing. And if you're interested in speaking at one of our, our meetups, go to wptampabay.org slash speakers slash call. It's also right at the top of the screen on the top of the menu. It says speakers, and it'll be right underneath that. 
Okay, our code of conduct for tonight. There are no stupid questions except the one you didn't ask. Uh, we are limiting questions discussion typically to 10 to 15 minutes so that we make sure we get through all the questions that have been asked. We are going to be pulling from our uh, Meetup RSVP list. We have two callers already in the call at the moment. And I believe one of them has two or three questions, and Marilyn has a good question as well. She's got two questions too, so we're probably going to like actually bring you both in possibly and just uh, kind of panel discussion, discussion your questions and go back and forth between you. Uh, oh, anything over 10 to 15 minutes on, a, on answering a question, you really should be hiring a consultant. And everybody gets to speak, but no crosstalk. That's so that we don't end up talking all each, over each other. Okay, so let me get rid of the shared screen and let's welcome Diana to our call. Hi Diana, I uh, got to take your phone off mute. <laughs> there you go. Hey. Hi. So did you uh, find the website? Uh, Diana's question was specifically about uh, a pop-up uh, that you wanted to change. You wanted to edit the pop-up message no, asking visitors to subscribe. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so that was one question, but when I went to look for it, um, I, another thing popped up that I've been seeing. Uh, looks, can I share my screen? Yeah. There's a little option down at the very bottom of the of your menu where the uh, mute, stop cam, etc. is. There's a share screen at the very bottom. You just have to give your browser permissions to share. Uh, share screen. Um, but what I want to show you is... Oh, got it. There we go. My screen? Okay, yep, so I can see it. This is what you're seeing is, a, a, is in paint. But you see these warning? It says warning, continue targeting, switch, blah, blah, those three lines. Right. That, sh that showed up at the beginning, at the top of my screen. I've seen it several times. Okay. It, it that is more than likely coming from uh, a misbehaving plugin, and you probably have debug on in your WordPress menu because those are PHP warnings and those would not normally show if you didn't have PHP warnings on. Um, so, wait a minute. So, so what I need to do is, let me go back to you. So, so how do I uh, No. <laughs> you, you, you want to, basically when you're sharing a screen, you want to share only the, con only the tab that, because uh, you've got the option to share like one tab on the Chrome. I know. Yeah. So, so I have to do some kind of debugging? Uh, no, there, it probably means that your WordPress debug is on. There's basically, uh, hang on one second, let me find a link for it. Uh, WP debug WordPress. And I'll copy this in and we'll put it on the message real quick. Uh, well, debugging in. Are there people or is it just showing up because, because of my... Uh, no, it's probably... Uh, if you give me the link to your website, I can tell you if it's shown up for us. Intimacyretreats.com. The one I went to was slash video. Intimacyretreats.com. Plural. Intimacyretreats.com slash video. Yeah, it's not showing up for your regular people. So it may only be showing up for you. So, okay. Um, what do I do? You don't have to. Uh, since it's not showing up for your visitors, it's, it's basically a PHP warning. So I'm going to show you very quickly how to turn those warnings off if you want to. <laughs> That's probably the easiest method. Um, go to this website, save, and that. You want to go to debugging in WordPress? Can I copy? Yeah. If you just search Google, it'll also get it. If you say debugging in WordPress, it'll take you there. Um, Okay. Um, yeah, and what you're going to be doing is basically changing your WP config to turn off uh, hide warnings. And that's okay. I don't need to be warned. Yeah, warnings, critical errors, yes, but warnings are a little bit over much. So, okay. so just, you probably got, you probably have a plugin that's kind of like older or it may have some issues and may need to have some work done to it. So that's what those usually are coming from. Thank you. Yeah, Travis can come back and... Page, on that same page, if you scroll down to the intimacytreats.com slash video, if uh -huh. you scroll, scroll down to the bottom, there's a, 
uh, a big square thing where it says subscribe kind of thing. Right. I have no idea when I go into my dash into the back, you know, into WordPress to work on, I can't find it on that. Theme. Okay. Do you know what theme this is? What? Do you know what theme this is? Not really. I can show you my dashboard and I mean, I can that'll work. It. Yeah, that'll work. If you want to share your dashboard. Yeah, I've got to find you again. Um, where was no problem. Uh, you're here. Okay, hang on. All right. Okay, your theme contains outdated copies of WooCommerce template files. Um, your screen's a little tiny for me. Uh, oh, it's actually called Intimacy, Intimacy Retreats theme. That's interesting. It Did you have it created by someone? It was a custom theme. I didn't design it. Right. Somebody designed, ah. the, somebody designed the whole website. Okay. Then more than likely your mailing list plugin. Uh, can you go to plugins? And installed plugins. There we go. Oh, it's a WP Bakery page builder. Uh, scroll down. Uh, keep going. Keep going. Is this the newsletter embed that's up toward the bottom of the page? It's not pop-up, yeah. but it's just like embedded in the page? Yeah, it's embedded in the page. On, on this page, it's embedded. On other pages, it pops up after a certain amount of time. Okay. So it's, it's that, probably it's, that Thrive Leads. Exactly, yeah. Based yeah. On, on the markup here, it's the Thrive Leads. I'm yeah. Sorry, Looks like you? it's put in by a short code. Yeah. See that plug-in midway down? The one that says, like, right below Security? Uh no, you see the Thrive Leads? Well, it's not, but I don't use Thrive anymore. Uh, that's what's doing this, though. Oh, More this than likely. Is, 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 that's, oh, that. I yeah, your theme, is, your theme is still based on Thrive, even though you may not oh. be running it. Uh, you know, I thought Thrive was something else. I once nope. had a company. Yep, it's that definitely that coming from Thrive Leads, because I'm looking well, at your. You know, knowing that it's coming from Thrive Leads. You mean the pop-up, the security thing? Uh, no, no, your your message, you're subscribed to our newsletter. Yeah, How, that's coming from Thrive Leads. Okay, thank you, because I thought <laughs> I thought Thrive was this other company. Okay, so when I go to the page though, um, or where do I find? Uh, go down to. It's probably in either tools or appearance or marketing. It might be in marketing. Actually, check down toward the bottom. It's the second item from the bottom called Thrive. You think Dash. it's in bottom? Oh, yeah, and there it is. Thrive leads. Yeah. Yep. There you go. Oh. Huh. So, how do I? And so <laughs> if you go if that first item there, click on the Thrive leads dashboard button. That's that, there's like that, that green button right there, just just to the right. Yeah, right there. Because I don't. Um, okay. Oh, I didn't even know this was here. Um, yeah, you've got a blog sign-up form, yeah. a blog yeah. footer. That's where you can change those at. Where, I, and I, where's the form itself? Where, where's uh, the, see the uh, first one? Yeah. Blog sign-up form? Yeah. That's probably your pop-up. Or your home page opt-in is, one of the two. But where's the actual, like if I want to edit it? Uh, off to the very far right, there's an edit button. See that? Uh, then there's blog form, so you need to click the edit button for that. Which is the pencil, it looks like. Yeah. Well, that's for the name of it, it looks like. You need to, I, there's a edit. Far button. right? Yeah, yeah right that there. one. Edit design, yeah, that's it. Which is probably going to load up in Visual Composer. Waiting for it. It says waiting. Um, yeah, it's... I, there's, the one that's on the video page toward the bottom, I don't think is this one. I think it's a different one. Oh. Based off what we saw on that page. Oh, okay. I don't know, though. Oh, this is a different one. Okay, but at least I know where to start looking. I'll have to play yeah. around and this out. Um, yeah, but that's how you edit the content. They're... I don't think I've ever seen this one, actually. 
Okay. Um, you might want to reach out to your developer. Yeah. Or yeah. at least now I know what the... Um, um, you would leave it by clicking the save work button. Uh, okay. Yeah. When you want to leave those, it's just like the visual composer. You click that little save work, but you can say cancel and don't publish or something. Yeah. So listen, you know, it's, the, what's really funny is some years ago, a company called Thrive, which is part of actually the local newspaper, um, was helping me. They were doing some marketing or something, or I won something, and and they did something with the website, but it had nothing to do with this. It was just the name is the same. And I almost got rid of that. I almost got rid of. That's why I haven't updated. I almost got rid of that plugin because I thought it was connected to that old company. Thank you. That's great. Oh no problem. Um, I do have one more, but I'll wait. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to bring uh, Marilyn on real quick, and then I will uh, swap you out in a bit. Okay. All right, we'll bring you back in just a few. <laughs> Enjoy the cookies in the green room. <laughs> hey, Marilyn. Hi. Welcome back. <laughs> Enjoy the cookies in the green room. <laughs> oh, you've got your YouTube on, I think. Hey, Marilyn. Hi. Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, it, it's yeah. Uh, pretty weird. I'm hearing several streams of conversation. You've got... You're watching YouTube and you're inside the StreamYard application. No, just, just turn till the you... sound sound off on YouTube. Turn it yeah, down. Yeah, just mute the sound on YouTube. You're watching YouTube and you're inside the StreamYard application. No, just, just till turn you... the sound sound off on YouTube. Yeah, just mute the sound on YouTube. Um, Here. Well, all I all I show is in StreamYard. No, you've got, you definitely have YouTube running some, YouTube or Facebook. And another tab? You have another tab going? Oh, is that better? Yeah, Phew. much better. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that's the nice thing about when you join the call this way, you don't actually have to watch YouTube anymore. You can sit in the green room. We just found out that you can sit in the green room and watch. So, yeah. Yeah, didn't realize okay. that actually worked. So. <laughs> so it's very confusing hearing those different streams. Yeah, well, she didn't enjoy the cookies, I take it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you left some for Diana. We had, you know, we had them just for you guys. <laughs> okay, so what are your questions, Marilyn? I saw the one was about uh, how to sanitize. Well, it was not so much how to, but what do you need to sanitize? Travis, you want to take that one? Um, well, in, in the context of this question, are you writing custom code? Or are you, are you using plugins to like collect? Well, I'm using code? plugins and I'm also doing some custom code. So if you're using custom code, any time you're accepting like external input from a user, no matter like what kind it is, you should be sanitizing that, which could be a mix of things. You could be yeah, using... even if they're filling out, if they're filling out a gravity form and, you know, typing yeah. stuff into the gravity yeah. form to be published into your pods post, or yeah. if they're inputting information yeah. even into the website. Yeah. So like if you don't if you're not controlling completely controlling what they're putting in, you've got to make sure that uh, they're not accidentally saying drop table, you know, which yeah. is going to drop your SQL database or something like that. Uh -huh. But there is a difference. Like if you're using something like Gravity Forms, that plugin is already doing the sanitization of all that incoming user input before it even um, reaches like whatever hook you're using to then do something with that information. Unless, of course, in that hook, you're accessing it directly through Postinga, because then it's just right. that's going to be unsanitized. Right. So you like you want to do a mix of sanitization. WordPress includes a, in core a bunch of different sanitization functions based on what you're doing, like basic text, text area. I think there's even stuff for like uh, like a hex color code. They will yeah. even sanitize. Yeah. Um, but there's also sanitiz sanitization you can do outside of that. Like, say you're expecting um, like a couple of specific values for an input, just like mm -hmm. doing putting those expected values in an array and just making sure that user input is in that array. Just that's stuff more like that. validation, I would think. It, it, it's a mix of both validation and sanitization. Mm -hmm. Well, one of one of the uh, issues is I want to be able for a user to. Um, uh, enter, enter, <clears throat> excuse me, 
enter text, but text that can include a URL. Okay. Which any of the standard sanitization functions will in WordPress will allow for that. And then just making sure even though you're sanitizing that data as it's coming in, when you output it, making sure you escape it properly. Yeah, that's the escape URL. Um, uh, well, no, like in that, in that case, um, you would probably want to use the WPKSES, uh, one of those functions, because it will do escaping of data, but it will allow certain like tags and stuff to get through. Uh -huh. Like you can have it sanitize it like it's post content. Like it's like a second. Like I'm gonna on the site. like I'm gonna link a yeah. one. Here we go. Share screen. Yeah. Oh, stop screen. I didn't realize I was sharing my screen still. <laughs> there we go. And application window. That one. Yeah. That's the. That's what he's talking about when he says KPSES post. Yeah. So it, it's something that would it'll like escape out the the contents like before you display them but it will do that like if you're display, displaying stuff that's like a mix that has like some html in it and it will strip out like bad like javascript and stuff that doesn't belong but still display everything else so you can choose what it uh what it does well, um you not with this one like this will this specific function sanitizes it in a way like if it was just like displaying like post content straight from like a, just a WordPress post, which will cover most of what you need. If you wanted to just do it standard, you could use the PHP strip tags function and just with that define like, hey, these are the these are the only HTML tags I want output. There's a couple of different approaches you can you can do to it. But always, so, any sort of, unless you know it's coming from a source like Gravity Forms that's already sanitizing the data, you always want to sanitize all user input. Okay. How about um, what I, what I uh, put out? Do I need to sanitize that as well? No, you're, you would be escaping that. Escape, okay, escaping. Yeah, escape on output. Sanitize escape on output. On out oh, okay. Yeah. If you're going to build a custom form, um, and not like use like an existing plugin, you're going to want to add uh, a nonce to it, <laughs> an N-O, uh, N-O-N-C-E, which will just do some basic verification to make sure like the person who's submitting it kind of is who they are. You could also add capability checks if you're doing something crazier. But it's always good from like the, the nonce will prevent uh, cross-site scripting attacks. That's okay. An important security feature. Yeah, I, I'm totally <laughs> over my head too. <laughs> I know what he's talking about because I've heard the words before, but I'm like going, yeah, okay. <laughs> the Word, uh, you, WordPress you, Codex has like a whole article about what is a nonce, how do you create one, how do you verify one. If you just look up WordPress nonces, it should be the first result. Okay. And so, um, about the only time the users are going to be entering anything is when they're filling out a form. Right. And I, I'm still using Pods form because I, I like the way it handles images. So, um, so you in couldn't my figure out the Gravity Forms um, mapping, or Gravity Forms. Um, I keep going back and forth on that, but it doesn't seem to be adding much and pods form seems to do what i need to do okay yeah I'm, I'm not a fan of pods form only because of uh honestly i'm just not a fan of it <laughs> that's yeah, just well, me. you can certainly do a lot more um um tweaking of, of the appearance with gravity forms and with the gravity forms you'll get like a lot more extensibility especially like if you need to do some custom custom functions around whatever those people are sending in outside of just putting it into a post. You know, you'll be able to do that very easily with Gravity Forms with the looks available. Well, it looked to me like almost all of the neat things were in add-ons that you had to pay more money for. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. So, 
Uh, did you have another question beyond the sanitize? I think you had one other one, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I would like to have some way for uh, one user to contact another one. Uh, we've got a, a editing system. So uh, somebody uh, writes a, a hype description and then at a given point, he's supposed to contact the editor for the editor to look at it and then publish it. Um, but I haven't seen any easy way for one user to contact another. Yeah, well, there's really you're, not. Yeah, well, if you're sure. able to let user A select user B and like select them in the sense of like you, they're selecting like, they'll see on the front end, they'll see the user's name, but like you're actually going to capture that user's ID. Every user in WordPress has an email address associated with that account. You can just right. on submission, look up user B based off their user ID, grab their email address, and then email them. Yeah. This is where Gravity Forms will be better, I think, in a lot of ways, yeah. because you could actually select the user from the uh, item and then yeah. feed the feed an email address afterwards. But you might have to look at like Gravity Flow if you're trying to build a workflow. Yeah. Or, or actually, Gravity Perks has some stuff that yeah. would be helpful for this. They have like a populate anything perk that will automatically mm. like populate users into a drop down. We're uh, a uh, the total volunteer organization, and uh, the uh, way that I can fund whatever I do program programmatically is by donations. Okay. So I, I'm trying um, to trying to avoid the, the extra cost. Okay. Yeah. Um, you can still do a drop down through pods, but if you're going to be doing one of those kind of things where you're like trying to pull the user's email address. You've got a couple of different ways to do it, and pretty much you're going to have to do a post, a post save action. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to like actually read the record inside your PHP, grab the email address, and then you're going to have to spawn an email message from within PHP. And I can't help you there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's and one with, of those things I wouldn't do. Yeah. With Gravity yeah. Forms, yeah. I think there's a few articles on on the doc site about how to dynamically populate choices for a dropdown. Well, I mean, we we have that. I mean, that's if she's got Gravity Forms the basic, she can use the Pods Gravity Forms add-on to do the full population. That's not a problem. Yeah. The big thing comes down to is if you're trying to grab, if you want to do a dynamic population of the email address, but based on the selection, you're going to have to, there's two little sides there, which is why the populate anything was what Travis yeah. was talking about. Because when you're doing a population of a drop-down with Pods Gravity Forms add-on even, you're just populating a list of IDs. So you're still going to have to pass over in a parameter to like a query to parameter or something else. The ID well, well, you, of... You, you could do two steps where you do yeah, the dynamic pop... You would do uh, a filter that dynamically populates the user, the list of users with their name and their ID right. into the dropdown. And then you would hook in to a notification you create on the form yep. that would go to that editor Mm -hmm. And you would filter it to then grab the user ID that was selected from that dynamic pop, uh, population drop down. Use that to look up their user, get their email address, and change who that notification is being sent to, to that editor. Yeah. Totally achievable with code, not too crazy. It's just something like populate anything by Gravity Perks would just make it like pretty seamless to do. Yeah. Because you would hide the, the you'd hide the email address and the value. In that kind of a situation, you would have the drop down list be labeled by the name of the person, but you would put their email address and the value or something of that nature. If you go the Gravity Forms route and you start um, running into issues, re reach out to me in in the Tampa Bay WordPress Slack. It's pretty it's pretty straightforward that I can help you out with it. Oh, okay, it's not, Thanks. not too difficult. Yeah, and that would be Tampa Bay. Uh, That's the if you go to wptampabay.org, uh, all of our communication channels are the first three things listed at the top of the page, and the Slack chat. Uh, we have a form so that you can sign up to it pretty easily. We okay. just add you to our Slack. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you again for coming and visiting. From you're in New Mexico, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for again for coming to visit from New Mexico. <laughs> Hopefully the cookies are still warm. <laughs> yeah. right. I'm gonna throw you back in the green room. Go enjoy the eggnog and the drinks and stuff. There's a okay, whole bar out there. Yeah.
Yeah, no Appreciate problem. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bring in Miss Gupta now. <laughs> Hi, Miss Gupta. Uh, take your phone off mute <laughs> or your computer off mute. Uh, you're still on mute. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Hi, Jim. Hi, Travis. Hi, Hi Ben. Yeah. I hope I'm pronouncing everyone right. Oh, our, yeah, our, you're fine. <laughs> I'm Archana. You can call me Archana. And okay. our Miss Gupta, Archana. if that's easy. No. Archana's good. We got it. Okay. Yeah. What's your question? Welcome. Uh, actually, this is my first time. So, like, I was just exploring, like, you know, because I am a WordPress developer freelancing. So I was just like, I'm in Tampa Bay, so St. Pete is close by. So I was just seeing like, you know, if, you know, I can give something and, you know, learn something new. Okay. So I just joined it, yeah. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, well, this is our Ask Us Anything. Our format pretty much is, is that we have people either ask their questions in Meetup, or if they have a question, they pop into our chat and ask it on here. They also ask it in the comments on YouTube. And then we pretty much uh, try to like panel answer it as much that's as we good. can. That's, that's really good, you know. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. really good. Cool, you know. Ah, cool. Yes. So, did you yes. actually have a question or were you just like, uh, not right hey. now. Yeah, okay, not cool. right now, but yeah, maybe like, you know, now, now, now I know like, you know, where to approach. So, <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I know. All right, awesome. Well, I'm going to throw you back in the green room then. Uh, Steve's yeah, got sure. a question and then we're going to go back to Diana again. So, yeah, uh, definitely. Enjoy yeah. the cookies, the eggnog, and welcome. <laughs> sure, Thank you I for will. joining. <laughs> okay. Thank you so All much. Right. Yeah. All right. Hey, Steve, welcome back. Hi, guys. Hey. Uh, hey. Um, so, okay. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I'm working on a comics website. Okay. Yeah. And so they sell comics, e-commerce, e right? Um, and they want to, the client wants to set up uh, pre-orders. Okay. Um, so that when new comics come in, that, oh, is my hair messed up? Oh, goodness. Um, so <laughs> when, <laughs> when, when new comics come in, um, um, the, um, they'll auto auto pay for the comics, right? Mm -hmm. So I know that there's a WooCommerce pre-orders plugin, um, but here's the trick, all right? What they wanna do with these comics is say, say the customer really likes Batman, right? right? So every time that there's a new Batman comic listed on the website, if the customer chooses, say they want five Batman, five new Batman, five copies of the new Batman every time it comes out, they want this to auto give this client the give the customer five Batmans and auto pay for it. Is that possible? Uh, you, hang on one second, Steve. Yes. You're, I'm going to mute you for a second. Just listen for a bit. You've got YouTube. Oh, sorry, that's not you. That's Elaine. Hang on. Oh, you're doing it again, Elaine. <laughs> yep, that's Elaine. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, Steve. I thought it was you. Okay. Okay. I thought I had I just, it muted. I muted you, Elaine. I'll, I'll bring you back in a minute, but you got to make sure your YouTube is muted, unmuted. Okay. There we go. This <laughs> muted. Okay. Just checking. No, because we're echoing. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Steve, um, so I think I know what you're talking about. This is typically where they do a draw, where they yank down all the comics off the thing and then give that kind of an option but are they going to give them they're just going to automatically bill them for it as a pre-order or are they going to yeah. give them the option to choose yeah no no they're going to have the option uh, of course uh, so the client says every time the new batman comics come out because say the client is actually probably uh owns a comic store okay so every time a new batman comic comes out they say i want to purchase five of the new ah, batmans automatically okay. so so that that's kind of the trick so i guess the pre-orders I don't think is an issue, but the issue or, or the question, I guess, is how do you associate all of the Batman comics? And then when it's listed on the website, they automatically uh, purchase pre-order or they automatically purchase the new Batman comics when they come out, when they're listed on the site. Is that possible? My thought would be. That is you, Steve. Steve, you've got a browser window that has YouTube or Facebook on. You need to go and make sure that the sound on that one is muted. Okay. Um, give me a sec. Or just yeah. make sure you have headphones on. Yeah, that'll just, also work. Can I just close the, the YouTube? You, yeah. You can watch it from here. Okay. 
I so we didn't you, realize that until this time that we actually that you could watch the whole show. Sorry, Elaine. <laughs> it was Steve. <laughs> so YouTube's closed now. Am I? You've still got something open. No, I think Elaine might be have some of the feedback. We're checking. I'm. Yep, it is Elaine. Yeah. It is Elaine. <laughs> It's a little it bit of like you, Elaine. You're you gonna get me in trouble, the, Elaine. The sound might not be coming through your headset. It seems yeah. like maybe it's coming through a different source. Huh. Yeah, check your audio yeah. source, Elaine, or your yeah your your output source. might not be the yeah. Right. Okay. My initial uh, thought on this would be <laughs> see. I was gonna route him. I was gonna route him to the WooCommerce expert in Lakeland because yeah. that's yeah. that's a I hard think, one because. So, so you, you'd want to make sure they have like something authorized on well, you'd want to make sure they have an authorized card on file. Right. But then it's right. just assigning all of Nope, it's totally. You want to assign all the comics to us each to a different taxonomy for the whatever series or what they belong to. Then you want to have a separate way, probably a custom table, to track essentially subscriptions. Or, or watching to a taxonomy per user. And then you'd want to hook in to when a post publishes, check what users are subscribed to that, that tag, that taxonomy, and create an order using whatever yeah. word WooCommerce create order function exists. Yeah, I... Hmm. Okay. I've not worked with WooCommerce directly, but like that's how I would attack the problem. Yeah, okay. I don't so know if any plugins exist. For you're that. probably going to need to look at another plugin though, because it's you're definitely talking about automating the order. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So there's probably not a really a plugin that does this specific thing, right? I'm I'm guessing. Uh, I don't know the WooCommerce space well enough to to say I'm here. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, do you remember? Were you at one of the meetups where we had the guy in from Lakeland? I was um, not. Uh, his uh, name is Rob. Let me see if I can get his name again. Hang on. Uh, WooCommerce. Lakeland. Rob. Uh, Rob Gelhausen. Hang on. Okay. Yeah, Rob Gelhausen. I'm going to just share you his WordPress uh, profile real quick. Reach out to him. Okay. One second. Hang on. Here we go. I'll just add it. But I imagine it's, it's also go. like... It's uh, profiles.wordpress.org R-E who press. Where did you save it or put it at? Can you see the banner at the bottom of the screen? The... Uh, where, we, where all four of us are. There's a big... Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Duh. Okay. Got yeah. it. Got I'll, it. I'll also put it in the private chat so you have it over there, too. So I, I appreciate it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Yeah, he is the... Uh, he's the WooCommerce genius around here. Okay. okay. And um, <laughs> I appreciate that. And uh, Travis, just to reiterate, though, real yeah. quick, you said uh, uh, you would attack it by assign a taxonomy and then, uh, and then make a custom table. And then you kind of lost me a little bit, I'll be honest. Yeah. Uh, so, so you'd have some sort of taxonomy uh, where like, like maybe it's like the comic book series where like yeah. each, there's a term for each series. Um, and then the, you, you would create a custom table that tracks the user ID and like what term they're subscribe, kind of, we'll call it a subscription, subscribing to purchase essentially. Okay. And then you would want to hook in when um, a post is updated, check that it's published or a publish hook for that post type. Yeah. Search for what users are subscribed to that series and create orders off that. But I well, really it depends want too. To... It depends on how they're loading their inventory yeah. because uh, I'm guessing that they're going to be getting each time they load, they get a new load in of new issues and new episodes and stuff or not episodes, new issue numbers. Those are physically going in a separate actual items, but they're inside a kind of like a series of a comic book line. So you've got like the comic book title and then it's it's series number, it's issue number. And then there's also like above that would be like the you've got either like DC Comics, you know, Marvel Comics, um, right. Eclipse Comics, that kind of thing. But underneath that there is like series, which would be like the uh 
kind of like the taxonomy that would conclude something like all Batman titles, you know, all Batman or something of that nature. And then underneath that, there's a series title, and then each each issue goes in as its own item within that series. Okay. Uh, that's how it you depends on how broad that. you want to do it. Like if you just want to track Batman, you know, it could just be whatever. Uh, comes in. Well, it depends. It depends on what they yeah. want. Yeah, I'm just going um, from the concept of having to do it in WooCommerce. You're going to have to involve because you're you're going to have to keep track of total inventory of each issue by title, by publication brand, by comic series. In addition so. to that, like depending on how many people they have subscribed, there's only going to be a certain amount of inventory. So you're going to want to keep track of who's getting what for each item. So All that right. way, as it replenishes, it doesn't start from the top of the list. It kind of like yeah. picks up from where it left off before. Well, wholesale and you're and probably going to... You're going to want to add some sort of threshold, probably, of like, hey, only order up to this dollar amount. Like, I don't want right. to spend more than this specific amount on each order. Well, and they're only selling, they're selling books to, there's two different kinds to this. Books that are going, they're selling comic books to other comic book stores. Is that right? They're wholesaling? Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Are they also doing pulls for, like, their customers? Yeah, I would imagine so, although I haven't specifically talked. To, they said it's mainly comic book stores or their customers, but... Okay. I would imagine yeah. anyone. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna basically what's gonna happen is is that prior to doing the order, they're actually gonna be looking at what the counts are that those people they're probably gonna be looking at a wholesale app, would be my guess. Okay. Yeah. There's gotta be something out there that attacks us. Yeah. I'll find it. Yeah. Uh, actually, the ISBN were like I mean, you have to put the ISBN anyway in, uh, but they're yeah. they're different when it comes down to uh, the comic book episode, the ish the issue, because okay, you don't have an I the ISBN is for the whole title, but the oh. issues, yeah, you got to look at that. You got to look at how see how they. Uh, okay, the yeah, book, honestly, the comic book guy should be able to tell you this because they know, they know exactly what when they're looking for something, they have a code that they need to be able to find that particular issue. That's a good point. I'll talk to them about it some more because we have been going back and forth a little bit because they do have a table with the ISBN and then all the other info. And I'm not really that familiar with comic books myself, yeah. but um, they have shared that with me. Well, second. thanks, guys. I appreciate it. And um, I can't really stay much longer because I am working, but I really appreciate the help and hope you guys are doing well. It's called the comic. In no, that's not it. I don't know where it is. Okay. How to identify your comics title and issue number? Uh, do, 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 do. it's the issue number, the indicia small print on the first. Hey, okay, I can't Thanks find it quickly. Sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> All right. I'm sure I have it in my table of stuff that they gave me. So okay, I'll, yeah, I'll get through it. All right, All right. Well, I appreciate luck. it, guys. Definitely Thank reach you. out to Rob because he's worked with wholesalers before and Lart and doing exactly what you're talking about, where he's the the big guy that does the distribution for like other people. So, I may know Rob. I, I think he may have... He came to one of the Tampa ones, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, I know who... Exactly, okay, I'll, I'll get in touch with him. I appreciate that. Yeah, Definitely. he's really good about this stuff, so... <laughs> okay. All right, good also, deal. Also, one, one last thing. Yes. Um, yes. I just did, like, a quick search. Maybe go uh, go to wholesalesweetplugin.com. Okay, wholesalesweetplugin.com. Yeah, S-U-I-T-E. Oh, got it, got it. Mm. Oh yeah, the WooCommerce order form plugin. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, entire catalog in one page. Wholesale Ooh. pricing, multiple user tiers, product visibility, wholesale order form. This might do a lot of it. Eh? Yeah, might. It might. Yeah, because it's got the wildcard key court, keyword and SKU searches. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay, so Hierarchal wholesale category filter. Yeah. Wholesale suite plugin dot com. Okay. Yeah, S U I T E. But I got would definitely yeah, reach it. out to Rob, too, with a lot of your ideas there because he has done the massive uh, stuff like that. All okay. right. That, that's good. Thanks, guys, for the advice, yeah, no and problem. happy holidays to all of you. Happy holidays to you, too. Have fun, man. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Okay. You all know right, that wholesale suite plugin mm -hmm. is legit? Because on their pricing page, they still market it where, like, they do, like, the whole – the old style where, like, they have, like, the software boxes on the screen – yeah, yeah, like it's like color, like they're like that whole like early two thousands thing. That's how you know. Okay. Oh, we lost Elaine. <laughs> she thinks she's coming back. All right, Diana, we're going to bring you back in again. Okay. You said you had another question. I do. Um, and by the way, 
I did look up that debugging um, help page you sent me to, and it's it's kind of above my pay grade to figure out what okay. it's to do. Yeah, she's getting uh, PHP warnings in the in the top thing. Honestly, I would reach back yeah. out to your developer who did your theme. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have that ability anymore to reach him, so I'm I'm looking for a, a, a consultant who can you know just work you know. For if you want to, uh, our if you join our uh, the wptamabay.org, join our Facebook group or on our Slack, reach out on there as a question, and we can more than likely uh, somebody will respond to you, and we'll get somebody yeah. or going your way. Yeah. Okay. If you post those PHP notices, we can at least like look at that. Like based off the path, we can at least tell you like what blog yeah. it is. I mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of times somebody like you who knows what you're doing, you can do it in you know, 30 seconds. Yeah, some, it's, sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're not. I saw Revolution Slider in there. Uh, Revolution Slider may not be updated. Yeah. Uh, you've so got a couple of plugins that aren't updated. So, so, I, did, so I updated the, uh, the Thrive Lead, which I hadn't done for a long time because uh, I thought it was something else. Anyway, and then I, saw, I, I updated um, WooCommerce blo blocks for WooCommerce or something like that, it said. And the same thing happened the last time I tried to do that. I, I did update, and then it failed. And then for about five more minutes, I, I was locked out of my site. It would say, um, uh, "Yeah, you've got a white. You got a blue. You got the white screen of death." Uh, it's you, if you're going to be starting to do something that's like you've got a public site that is already starting to take orders and stuff. You definitely need to start thinking about doing. You're on GoDaddy. You said yeah. you're. You might need to be going to a better hosting company and start keeping a backup and a staging site. Well, we don't do that much. But anyway, we've had it for four years on there. Okay. I've had, a, I've had a website. I did do my own website 20 years ago. Okay. <laughs> Actually, yeah, over 20 years ago. Back in the 20th century, I had uh -huh. learned HTML. But that's as far as I got. Okay. Gotcha. Anyway, um, the, uh, the other question I was going to ask, and let me just share my screen here. Is on the intimacy retreats, um, intimate, the welcome page, the main page, intimacyretreats.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's this, and you see, yeah, there's this picture, and they're the words, right? Romantic workshops for couples. I know how to, I changed it to now on video. I know how to find where that is, change the script and everything. And this, this picture down here, um, I know how to do that. But this picture that's behind there, I can't find it. I can't figure out. So this is the. Uh, That's your page builder. But I can't find. I can't find that picture with all the. Uh, find the block where that gigantic romantic workshops for couples text is. Right here. Okay. Is it in the section title? Okay. okay. Uh, look at your. Okay. Over to the far right at the top of your. Okay. Can you see me? You can't see my mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here running my mouse across your screen and you can't Actually, see hold on, hold on. I think I know where this is. Go up it's one a, level, like see, like, one to more. the top right there of this, like, little container. There's that pencil, that edit Yeah, line. that pencil right there. Yeah, I think it's that one. That yeah, row. you're got to edit that row. And slow down, scroll down. Your should be an image Actually, in there somewhere. Click or maybe parallax click that design background. options tab. There's nothing there. Parallax oh, yeah, you're right. There's no parallax background image there. But there's so a it design might be in the one below. Go up. Next to general? In that yeah, check area? design options, but that's probably just CSS stuff. But check it. Where, where? Oh, oh, go back into that? Go back into that? Yeah, where we were just that. This one here? No, this one over here. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe it's this one here. Uh, that's this column. Yeah, it might be at the column mm -hmm. level. Uh, yeah, no, no, there's no, no. But you can see also in here, I've up in that blue off. at the top where it says blue? column settings. Says, ah, go back in. <laughs> go back in there again. This one, the right. column one? Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. See design options right beside general? Check there. Nope. No. Uh, but do that on the row. Yeah. On the row from the other one. So uh, go ahead and close that little thing down real quick. Yeah, on the section on the uh, the one that's on the far right, the tab that includes your empty space section title, section subtitle, and empty space. Click that again, and then click Design Options. And edit this row. And then Design Options. There it is. There it is. Edit this row. See the see right below background. Yeah. There's a box right there with the image. That's where your image is coming from. So you want to either kill that one and put it in the other one 
place or you want to replace it I'm there. I'm going to work on this on, on a copy of it before I can figure, figure out. Okay. okay. All right, that's Wait, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so yeah, I will reach out to you. Can we stop sharing? Um, I'll, I'll reach out to you because uh, truthfully, I don't know what I'm doing, you know, completely. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, that, that we might, I mean, I don't do, uh, I don't do client work and I know Travis doesn't. I know Lane does and Jen does. So, and we do have a, quite a few on uh, both the Slack and on our Facebook group that make themselves available for consulting work. So uh, that's so, the best way to grab that. Yeah, because yeah, you're... They just need little things like that, you know? Help me yeah, but them. the whole thing is, is you pull up a whole bunch of those little things and it adds up to a lot. So... <laughs> exactly. Sort of one at a time, one at a time. I know. All right. All right. All right. And, then, and yeah, because yeah, I looked at the debugging thing and I, it's like, what? You know, I didn't have yeah. that. All right. Thank you very, very much. So yeah, I no problem. Can... Thank you for uh, popping. Are you also in St. Pete? I'm actually south of you. I'm on Siesta Key. Okay, cool. Welcome. But I saw you some, somewhere, I don't know, on Facebook, I guess. And yeah. I went, oh, this sounds yeah. interesting. So, yeah, we've been doing this for a while. We've been uh, a live WordPress meetup. Uh, we've been doing it since 2015, I think. Wow. And, uh, are you are you all like just volunteer? This is like a yeah, we're all volunteer. We're all volunteer. Uh, t Travis and I both work for Gravity Forms. Elaine works for herself, and uh, Jen, when she's not on her today, but she also works for herself. And uh, we also have uh, a really good friend of ours who's a business analyst who uh, doesn't get to come on the calls very often, but she's amazing. So if you ever need like someone to help you kind of like drive your, you know, look at your business and look at different ways of of possibly marketing it she's really good at that too so we have name? a we have a good range of people to pull from let's just put it that way what was oh, her, name? We lost. Uh, her name is um that, that, that's really nice of me jim that's terrible what? travis what's her name michelle <laughs> michelle thank you her name is michelle michelle jarda uh jarado michelle jarado yeah yeah She'll pop in if she's got something that to, you know she's she's in our group so we'll pull her in. Right. Yeah, I've been trying to we've been trying to get her back on the calls again because she's she's good and dynamic. So. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. All right, it's we'll have. Uh, was it though? It was a little hard finding it. Yeah, it's really hard. Ba WP Bakery's a pain in the ass. So. <laughs> Thank you. All right, have fun, Diana. Enjoy your holiday. Okay. okay. Uh, we'll wait for Elaine to see if she's going to come back in again. I think <coughs> we answered all the questions from the meetup, didn't we? I think we did. Let me check in real quick. Uh, uh, here's one. I would like to know if there's a better merchant processor integration for WordPress that is less expensive than PayPal and is secure. You're probably, until you're doing heavy volume, you're not going to find anything cheaper than PayPal because pretty much every payment gateway across the board is the same processing fees of 2.9% yeah. plus 30 cents. Mm -hmm. I definitely recommend using Stripe. Yeah, I would use Stripe over PayPal in a heartbeat. Yeah. Unless, of course, you your customers want to pay using like their PayPal balance. Right, because then you have to use PayPal. Yeah. Or something that at least interfaces with PayPal. And you've got Square is also available. Square is yeah. a good option. But all three of those do the exact same processing fees yeah. and percentage rates. Uh, Square, if you're doing a large volume, will give you a discount after a while, depending on how you plan on using it. I think they all will. That's true, but they that, probably do. I they all do volume the, discounts. Yeah, but that yeah. threshold to get there is yeah. quite I result. Honestly, the only, I, I can't think of any one that even does it. No, because even, even the one that I was thinking of for uh, donations still uses PayPal and Stripe. Yeah. So there's but really I would still just recommend Stripe because their management tools are insanely easy to use. Yes, they are much better reporting. Yeah. So I have to admit. Okay, that's that's it. That's the end on our questions. Um, let's see. Oh, I see. Marilyn is bouncing up and down, but she didn't. You didn't ask anything in the chat, Marilyn. <laughs> well, I put it in the the uh, private. Chat. Oh, in the comment box. I'm sorry, I didn't see that oh, one. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, I'd like to, uh, copy my website over onto a local system on a laptop okay. and, uh, with looking into ways to do that. 
Um, well, typically, when anytime you're doing a migration, right off the bat, the two necessary things are is a database dump, a SQL database dump, and a full copy of everything from WP content down. That's the two necessary yeah. things for copying a website. Yeah. The because easiest WP way the to easiest do this, is, <laughs> and I think they still have a Black Friday sale going on, um, is WP Migrate DB Pro. They have a suite of plugins. Well, their, their main plugin will migrate the database over. And because like it's not just as simple as the SQL dump, you also have to do the search and replace of the domains when you yeah. bring that over from your production to your, your local domain. But they also have um, add-ons, depending on what tier you go with, that will automatically migrate all your media files, your plugin files, your theme files, so that way you don't have to do all the file management. Um, I, I ask because uh, my uh, the guy who's hosting the, the website recommended all-in-one mi migration. That's what Elaine uses, I think. And she likes it. Is that the one you're using, Elaine? You're on mute right now. Oh. I'm not muting you, so it must be you, Elaine. I use uh, <laughs> all in one WP all in one migrate. Yeah. 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 That's a good it's one. It's pretty, it's a good one. At one stage of the migration, it will ask for yet another plugin that is not in the repo. So you kind of have to, it'll, it'll have a link to go get it and download it and then upload it into your website. It's for websites that are large, that have more yeah. files that go over a certain yeah. amount of megs or something. Yeah. And uh, you can you, you can use the same thing to I believe all in one to import it into local by Flywheel. If you've ever looked at that one, that's a really oh. good local development environment. Flywheel, did you say? It's <coughs> excuse me, sorry. Local you, by Flywheel. Local yeah. by if, Flywheel. If, if you just go to localwp.com, is the website. Okay, sorry. It I connects with. Flywheel, which is a hosting service, pretty well yeah. to be able to pull, like it'll pull directly your production or your staging site to local, your, your local system, without having to do any extra steps if you're using a hosting service. But even if you're not have, using your uh, hosting service, like it's incredibly easy to set up local sites. Yeah. And they also do the same thing with WP Engine. Yeah. Now. Oh, yeah, because so you have yeah. either WP Engine or, lo or Flywheel. Local works with them seamlessly, but you can easily pull another site into it from any other uh, migration tool. And if you if you don't want to use a plugin like that, something I'm starting to look into, because um, I have to make some, some tools to add gravity forms for our ops and our web team to do local local installs is WordMove, W-O-R-D-M-O-V-E. Oh, I've heard of that one. And you'll basically, like you, you install WordMove uh, on your system and you create a configuration file of like, hey, here's like the database, here's here's the WordPress path, and like, hey, here's what I don't want oh, to wow. include, and you provide it like your database credentials, your SSH credentials, and it'll automatically like pull down the database, do the, the file sync, all that stuff, without having to use a plugin for it. That one. Yeah. Okay. I'll drop a link to it in the private chat. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, we have another person on the call, so I'm going to drop you back into the green room again. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Hey, Anthony, you got to take your phone off mute. Hey. Hey. There we go. I was just asking the question in chat. You probably see it pop up in a second. Uh, but it's, it's actually a two part question, um, two unrelated to each other. But the first question is. Um, you guys know of uh, any type of plugin that allows you to create a peer-to-peer -peer platform without the usage of WooCommerce? Because I've seen some out there that all kind of tie in because I guess WooCommerce is you know, native to WordPress, but also like, I don't want to tack on using WordPress. I mean, WooCommerce. I don't have to, but um, preferably it'd be something that would be independent that would work directly either with PayPal 
forward, right? It's something that allows you to build a peer-to-peer -peer network directly with uh, your, your audience, uh, create like a GoFundMe kind of like site, but not using a thing, but it would be a plugin. So that was my first question. I don't know if you guys ever yeah. encountered I mean, or interact any plug like that. You mentioned like kind of like GoFundMe, where if it's doing like donations like that, Give WP would probably be yeah. a recommendation. I did see that, and I did check in on them, but they don't have one that allows peer to peer crowdsourcing. And that's correct. Yeah, for that purpose. Um, they do have a workaround though. If you go onto theirs, uh, they've got a workaround that kind of works together with Gravity Forms. Mm -hmm. um, if you check into it, it's it's one of their blog posts because they set up something where they had like um, like a runners kind of like a marathon thing where everybody was like co-sharing donations and mm -hmm. stuff. And so they did have a way to do it. Okay, so, and that goes yeah. steps for change. Was that? The, yeah, that was the one. Steps for change. Okay. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll drop a link to that case study in the in the private chat so you can take a look. Awesome. Thank you. And yeah. then the second question would be based on gravity forms. You guys know because I, I saw on I think in some of the documentation on the, on the site that um, I was looking for a way to create a nested repeating field, but it looked like the add-on was beta, and, and a lot of the uh, functionality is you know like some of the. Uh, some of the conditional statements and things like that were not working with you nested do you guys know if, if it's still in beta? Uh, nested forms from uh Gra gravity perks yeah I, maybe but i think it's something that actually was native to gravity yeah forms so the repeater field that's native in gravity forms it's still in beta yeah um if you right want now, something more right now uh, like 2.5 is a thing that's coming from Gravity Forms. It has like a visual overhaul of the form editor. That's what the team is focused on right now. I okay. know, I think, I believe the repeater field is on the public roadmap. There is a roadmap available for customers. Uh, if you okay. go to the support page and you're logged in. Definitely, okay. the team is definitely aware of, you know, improving that thing and bringing it out of beta. But I think um, in the meantime, if you're, if you're looking for something that can do like a lot of that conditional logic stuff, I think nested forms by gravity perks is the way to go yeah and it's solid yeah okay and like there'll be that nested forms perk will be around like even after mm -hmm. the repeater field comes out of beta yeah not because like there's different use cases for what you yeah. use that nested forms thing for outside of just a repeater yeah it's got a couple of things that kind of remind mm -hmm. me of gravity view but in a much cleaner, well, sorry, in a much nicer interface specifically with forms where you have like yeah. the nested form and you can kind of create a list list of the items and you can go in and edit and add to as you're working on them. So like something nice. that's, that's different between the two implementations is like the repeater field will collect information on that form and it will process it on that form. But with the nested form, each entry that's submitted in that nested form, like you could set up feeds on that child form that will mm. process those feeds for each of those child entries separate from the parent form. So if you need to do like specific actions against those repeated items, that's a good good use case for nested forms. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. No that was problem. It. Not a problem. All right. Cool. Yeah, I was like, going, you're not calling from your car. I mean, not driving, are you? <laughs> no, no, I'm parked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's all that's I was worried about. <laughs> okay cool do you have any other questions um there, there was one other one but i, I it's kind of um a little early to ask this because i was going to do a documentary one was uh, i'm trying to create a um I'm trying to create i'm trying to recreate a front end submission using gravity forms mm -hmm. for a client and um what's happening is uh they have a um uh, an event management system that allows them to do ticketing, sell tickets, and right. it it creates a like for the ticket part, it creates an array, and mm -hmm. I don't know how you do that with Gravity Forms if that's even possible to, to pull in all that data from the front end. It uh, is. There's two different things. If you need to pull it in for a drop down list, there's look for dynamic population on documentation. Look for dynamic population drop down list and you'll find it. Uh, if you're also, but if you're needing to store it as another value into something else, 
what you're going to want to look at as, as one of the filters for like post. I don't know which one it would be, but it'd be one of the filters for like post submission or post save. You'd either want to go with. I had. A, I was just looking at it. Either G form entry post save. That's it. Or G form after submission. Yeah. Underscores in between those words. Yeah, both of those are places to hook in. Yeah. So. If you actually, and I will put this in the private chat as well. Uh, Gravity Wiz has a great hook reference that walks through like when a form loads, when a form submitted. It shows you every what? action what? and filter what? that runs and, in the order it runs in. <laughs> and where I, has this been? Sorry. <laughs> I think. And that'll be in the private chat as well. Hang on. I think I just lost myself. Where did I go? Oh, there I am. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've, where's that been, Travis? I didn't even know that as a support guy. <laughs> you where's that been my whole it? life? Yeah, exactly. I have been looking for that. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Tony. Is you go by Tony or Anthony? Uh, Tony's fine, yeah. Okay, cool. I don't think you've ever joined one of our calls before. so. Um, no, this is the first time. No, awesome. Thanks. Cool. Glad you popped in. Uh, go, I'm going to throw you back in the green room. Enjoy the cookies with everybody else. I'm sure there's still some down there. <laughs> yeah, Nich okay, so Nichelle's going to hide from us, so she's not going to join us. We're actually at the 7.30 mark, so we can probably go ahead and wrap. Uh, it's us We usually only keep these going for about an hour. Two hours is almost is too much. Um, we didn't even have to fill with our usual, hey, what's everyone been working on while we wait for I know. questions? We had, a we had a lot of dialing customers this time. That was really nice. I love this. Uh, by the way, any of you guys that are watching this after the fact, we love it when you guys call in because we love this interaction. It's very pleasant. So It's very um, difficult to diagnose issues when there's about a 20 to 25 second delay on the stream. Yeah, exactly. So. What about the plug-in? What about the plug-in Clearfy? I came across Clarify? it on a site that I manage, and I remember, I think it was one of our speakers who recommended it. Um, the really? guy who talked about security was his name John. John. How do you spell that? Yeah, I don't know how Clarify. you spell that. One. Like the word clear. C L E A R. F Y. Oh, it less is, is clear. If oh, clarify, clear fee, clear fee, or clarify. Here we go. Clear fee, we'll whatever. Just, you're talking about this one here, I think. It just uh, does this please. sort of. It just has a statement. We clear out all this WordPress stuff that you don't need, and blah blah blah. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. <laughs> yeah, first, I've seen it. Yeah, I tend to optimize my stuff myself. I don't tend to. But yeah, I don't know anything about it, don't, Elaine. Oh. It looks like it's definitely right. more than just security. Yeah, it's definitely more than just security though, because it's doing yeah, it's doing like search and index indexing, fix another plugin. My God, there's just like okay, yeah. it's claiming a lot. Yeah, Let's put it like that it way. removes it removes auto paragraphs, which is a weird thing to include in this. Yeah. Um, well, it's doing, is it doing metafine too? And that gets dangerous. Yeah. Because if plugins have already got their scripts minified, you don't want them to minify them again. So. Or if you do the whole thing where you like combine the scripts to run together, like if that can cause problems in the way that they're yeah. yeah. They're loaded, yeah. But yeah. well, we're at the we're at the end point, I think. So um, all right, let's wrap this up. Uh, again, everybody, we will not see you on the fifteenth because we're taking off for the rest of December. But we will be back here again on January 5th for our year in hell, 2020. So please make sure to RSVP, even if you're not going to dial into the call, even if you've got like a late Christmas party or Halloween party or whatever, holiday party, um, you know, at least RSVP and let us know what you'd like to learn this year. Because we are going to, we take that stuff very seriously. And we do try to theme our talks and stuff around those options and suggestions. Um, I miss the fact that we're not doing this live this year, but what are you going to do? <laughs> and uh, it's one of those kind of things. We're in that kind of a world right now. So uh, remember, everyone, to um, if you know, stay safe and sane this holiday season. Um, stay safe, sane, and distant. 
and distance. Stay safe, sane, distant, and masked this holiday season. Uh, do not keep keep the spread down, please. Keep the spread down as much as possible. Uh, please make sure you visit our website at wptampabay.org. That's where we do post all of these. Uh, one of the nice things about the live stream is that our videos automatically go live, so I don't have to do any actual processing work after the fact, so it's a really nice way to keep our content coming to you. Uh, all of our video, all of our talks, prior talks, and their videos and slides are online if we have them. Um, Make sure that you like and subscribe this video on YouTube. That's down below in the bottom. See the little like button, hit that. Hit the subscribe button, most definitely. Click the bell to make sure you're notified of updates. And uh, that's pretty much gonna be it. Um, we will see you guys in another month. And let me find my little branding thing and show the video and then we'll be out of here. All right guys, remember, hang on. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you for watching our recorded session from WordPress St. Pete Meetup. We meet twice a month on the first and third Tuesdays in downtown St. Pete at the Suncoast Developers Guild. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up in YouTube and be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified when new videos are added. Find out more about WordPress St. Petersburg at our website at wptampabay.org.